Hi, in this video I'm going to demonstrate how to design a wheel for a mousetrap car using Tinkercad. The first thing I'll do is change the title of my Tinkercad to something I can recognize in the future. Okay, uh, it's a wheel, so we're going to be starting with the cylinder and using primarily holes and cylinders. Now the first thing I want to show with the cylinder that's particularly important when designing something like this wheel is that you have control over the number of sides. And you can see that reduced si sides make this thing really a polygon, whereas if we maximize sides, this will be uh, smoother, something that we definitely would desire in a wheel. Okay, now I'm going to go to a set of specifications for the mousetrap car wheel. So for the back wheel or the rear racer, the store-bought wheels are 40 millimeters in diameter. I'm giving you an option here between 50 and 30. If we want to design um, basically the same wheel that we might be purchasing will go with those same dimensions of 40 millimeters. Okay, and I'm going to set the height here at 10 millimeters, which is about the size of a rubber band that we're going to be using for traction. Now, my goal with the hole is to um, cut out uh, as much material as possible. So I have I can think about uh, how how I want this wall thickness. And again, I'm going to increase the number of sides. That's kind of as important when printing a hole as it is when printing the wheel itself. And I'm going to set this diameter to be just a few millimeters. Uh, less than the diameter of the wheel. So I'm going to go with 36 millimeters. Planning for 36 because I uh, that is going to leave 2 millimeters to either side of the circle. Okay. Now when lining these items up, you might want to select the top view and an orthographic projection. Notice in perspective view you have the deformed shapes, um, which is what this would look like, you know, uh, looking at things at different distances, but for alignment, switching to flat view or orthographic will really help you line these things up. Okay, I'm going to select both objects, and there is an alignment tool here. Notice the shortcut in green there, L. doesn't have to be a capital L. Just hit L on your keyboard. That's my preference. It's much faster. And use that tool to line up the hole with that cylinder. Now I just need to uh, grab these two cylinders and group them. Here's my group button, but again, um, start using these shortcuts. Control G is going to uh, really speed up your work. Um, now I had grabbed this cylinder as well, knowing that eventually I'm going to want a collar. Okay, and we have some specifications for that as well. So uh, what I have for axle collar is just um, a maximum and minimum depth. So that's going to be the height. I think I would set this to about the same height as my wheel. I'm going to maximize the number of sides. I need to drag another hole in here for my axle hole. Uh, here it's going to be important also to maximize the number of sides so this hole comes out as a smooth surf circle. And I'm going to set the size of this to 3.6 millimeters, which is what we have found uh, prints as a very good uh, press fit for an eighth inch aluminum or steel axle. Now, uh, the collar that we're going to put the hole through, we would want to be at least um, probably one, depending on you know what how we're experimenting with lightening this thing up at least a millimeter or two thick I just want I think I want to experiment with a one and a half millimeter wall so um, if this diameter is 3.6 millimeters I'm going to add three millimeters to that 
uh, 6.6. So by making this cylinder uh, three millimeters greater in diameter, uh, that's going to leave a wall thickness of one and a half millimeters on each side. Now I'm just going to grab all of these items and use my L for a line tool and line all of those up. Okay, a final consideration. I probably don't want this hole to go all the way through the wheel. So here's where um, I can look at this in a good side view. If I take this part, right now it's still in alignment, so I need to click off of that. If I select the cylinder, I can lift this up uh, one or two millimeters. You see that dimension showing here, such that um, the axle will go to a certain point and then stop. I'm going to go with two millimeters, and I think I'm also going to increase the height on this guy by a couple of millimeters as well, even though that's not agreeing with the specification. Okay, uh, we still need to make some axles, but that's been a good introduction to uh, how to make these circles and align them.